Well, welcome to the Boiling Point. I am with the famous Jude Wolf. This is the first time that we've actually been able to do something together on the Boiling Point, I believe. You actually host the Boiling Point for me when I'm out of town. Yep. And, yep. and actually, the Boiling Points are a lot smarter when he's doing it. So um, glad you're with us. And what we thought we would do today is really get into some um, just some elementary stuff about the steam system and the boiler room, about how the actual system works, starting from the water coming in. And thought it would be great that Jude walk us through the process here um, of how things work in a boiler room. So why don't you take it away there? Well, the path of the water is always a great way to look at the boiler room because a lot of your troubles sometimes involve getting water into the boiler. So understanding exactly the point of water entry all the way through the system is a great exercise in your own boiler room. Mm -hmm. So we got a water softener here with city water coming in. Um, that's our first line of defense against scale, first step in our water treatment. So this is softening, removing calcium, magnesium, and we're taking that softened water then to a recovery unit. Now, not all systems will have a recovery unit, but if you've got a lot of makeup in your process for your boiler, this is gonna help extract heat out of what's going to drain, and it's gonna boost that temperature on the water's way to the deaerator. How important is like water pressure um, coming in? Uh, well, it's critical because if we don't have water, enough water pressure to get into the deaerator, mm -hmm. deaerator is going to be at 7 PSI typically. But any valve, anything along the way saps some of that pressure. So one thing that we like to have is actually a gauge on our incoming water. Adequate water pressure is important for your softener to work right. And if we don't have enough water pressure and volume capacity, we're going to run out of water at the boiler eventually. Okay. So then we're going over here. Yeah, so we've got our heat recovery system. Okay. And make a long story short, this is taking water that would go to drain hot and we're warming our incoming water with that. What so, typical temperature are we getting it to here? Uh, it's not unusual to see a 20, 25 degree rise. And okay. I know that's not like gonna get it to boiling, sure. but it's free energy. So right. you may be having to add cooling water for your blowdown otherwise. So it eliminates cooling water and recovers the energy. So it's sort of a two-sided benefit there. Okay, and then we step over and we actually are starting to put a little bit of chemical onto the water here after the soft water. Yeah, chemicals, you know, softener is the first step of our water treatment program. Um, chemicals are a second important step. They're helping keep solids in solution, eliminate oxygen and whatnot. So this chemical setup's pumping the chemical over to the deaerator and to piping points um, for application of those chemicals to the water. Okay, and then it moves on over to the deaerator. Yeah, so we're, we're lucky to have a deaerator here. Not everybody has a deaerator. You may have a vented feed tank, but a deaerator actually is part of the chemical program. It helps remove the oxygen, so we use less chemicals. Um, and it also increases the water temperature a greater amount, so there's less stress on the boiler. Um, so it's going to have a vessel to hold and maintain a certain amount of water available for the boiler. And we've got pumps to, to motivate that water to whatever boiler is running at the time. So we actually have about a 25 degree uh, rise there. Then what's going on here? Yeah, once the water goes into the deaerator, it's going to go from whatever temperature, 40 degree city water or 75 degree out of the recovery unit. And we're going to use steam, that temperature and turbulence to bring that water temperature up to typically about 225 degrees on a deaerator. Okay. A little bit cooler for a feed tank, maybe 185. Okay. And so now the water's prepared, and now we've got to pump that over to. Yep, we're going to pump it boiler. over to the boiler. So here our feed water is coming from our boiler feed pumps, and in this case, it goes up and through an economizer. Mm -hmm. um, anything we can do to boost that water temperature and when it's going into the boiler is basically free energy recovery. Um, so that's just less work the burner has to do to get it up to the boiling temperature. So we've got a control valve to throttle the amount of water going in and that in turn is controlled by a level control head. So this is just one of many styles that we can use to maintain the proper water level in the boiler. Um, also serves as a limit. So if we don't have sufficient water in the boiler, it's not gonna run. So the water goes here into the side of the boiler, and this is really kind of a critical point. 
Uh, we've got a check valve here so that when we put the water in the boiler, it stays in the boiler so mm. we can boil it and send it the right direction. Right. If that check valve fails, we'll send water back to the deaerator because this is a higher pressure if the pump shuts off. Um, it's going to cause big problems over there and here. So uh, check valve health is important yep. and uh, it goes in there and then it's up to the burner. And as far as the, the water um, inside the boiler, um, really critical on the levels. So there's obviously things in place to be able to make sure that you have the right level of the water. Yeah, it's interesting, you know, people say, oh, well, if you don't want water, low water in your boiler, keep more water in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you could raise the water level in your boiler. But what people don't realize is that the level that we have in a boiler is very carefully controlled because the higher it is, the more likely we are to actually suck water with the steam out into the system. And if we run it lower than we need to, then we're gonna be more prone to tripping on low water mm -hmm. if there's any upset. So on a boiler, the normal water level variation is normally gonna be you know, an inch and a half, two inches tops. On a deaerator or some other tank application, I mean, water level could go up and down six inches, it wouldn't matter. But if you're six inches high, if you're at the top of the sight glass, I guarantee you're pulling water with your steam out into the system and that's, that's not beneficial for anything you're trying to do. Right. All right, well, that's the wrap up on the actual water coming in from the city and actually getting into the boiler. Tune in next time and we'll be talking a little bit about um, once it gets to the, uh, to the burner um, and, and, and not actually the water to the burner, but we're actually yeah, gonna turn the burner on yep. and then we're gonna make that water turn to steam. And we will see you next time on The Boiling Point. Well, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Appreciate Jude hanging out with us and giving us a little more insight on once the water gets into the boiler room, what actually happens. Well, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you don't mind, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, share those videos and just go out and look at all the stuff that, we, that we've got. And we will see you next time on The Boiling Point.